this is filmmaker Zig Zelker uh, from I Dream Machine. My latest film, Billboard, is out, and you're listening to So Booking Cool with Jewel B. Welcome to So Booking Cool. It's Jewel B. I'm so excited today about our guest. He is the filmmaker of the latest new film called Billboard. Joining us today, Zeke Zelker. Zeke Zelker. Me, Joel. Of course, Zeke. How is it going and how long have you been a filmmaker? Oh, it's been an awesome day. Um, I love uh, promoting what we're working on and stuff and you just keep going. Uh, I've been a filmmaker for um, over 20 years now. Um, yeah, I've been making films since uh, the mid-90s. What have you learned throughout all of that? If you just had to narrow, because you probably learned many things, but if you just had to say the most important key things that you've learned throughout your long career as a filmmaker, what what are the nuggets? Uh, sure. So it's interesting, it's a matter of time. Uh, before, when I was younger, I would rush things through and get things done as fast as I could because I wanted to get out to the next project, which then that project suffered. And then this latest project we've been working on for over 10 years now, like literally full-time working on it for 10 years. And it's interesting is how time played a part in that as well is because certain things um, probably would have been more successful if we actually were able to collapse that time. But the challenge was was that, you know, we, we were constantly having to earn money to spend money for the project. So that's what long gated the entire production cycle of, of, of Billboard. So did you know that this was the career that you would pursue, Zeke? No, <laughs> not at all. No, actually, I originally, um, when I was a kid, we grew up pretty poorly. Um, not poorly, I should say poor. And so, like, we used to clean real estate offices to get my mom through school. Uh, my dad didn't have um, constant work either. And so I always wanted to, believe it or not, be on Wall Street. Uh, I wanted to be a broker. I wanted to, uh, you know, basically live that kind of life. And until I got a taste of it, uh, I used to, you know, I was in a camera class with Merrill Lynch on the tech sector. And after I did that for a while, I realized that that was not the way to go. And then I decided to um, make films instead. What's your favorite thing about filmmaking? I really like all aspects of it. I, I would have to say that I like the solitary aspect of being a writer. Mm-hmm. I write. I write almost every day, uh, but I like the uh, the things like it encompasses all the things that I love to do. You know, I love the business side of it. I love the creative side of it. I love you know the costumes. I love the art direction. I love the camera work. I love all these different things. And you know, being a DIY filmmaker, you kind of end up learning it all as well. Uh, I generally produce other people's work, and then I'll uh, direct what I write, and obviously also produce. But I love about filmmaking is that. There's so many different things that I love to do encompasses all in one in one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you and, and quite honestly, like if one of those things is off or doesn't work, the entire thing falls apart. So there, there's some really interesting pressures with that as well. But I, I absolutely love uh, everything about filmmaking. The only thing I don't like doing, quite honestly, is raising money. Uh, I'm not really good at raising money. That's one reason why we've always produced it. We produce tr- primarily off of cash flow. Um, and I've never really worked with another producer to help me raise money either, and that's that's also a character flaw of my own. When you say that you write every day, what are you writing like as a filmmaker? What does that look like? Um, it depends. Right now, uh, I'm actually working on. I wrote a script that that I've been challenged to write into a novel, and so I spend at least a half hour to an hour every day writing, but. It all depends on where I'm at with the, the cycle of a production. Like, for instance, like, I'll write press releases for, you know, uh, my, in, my internal, uh, you know, press people. And then I will also then write, you know, briefs on the film. And then, like, you're constantly writing different things. It might be, you know, copy for the website or, or, um, you know, trying to get something else out there. So it's always some sort of writing. And it's interesting because I do teach at, at university on occasion. And that's the one thing that, that I would say that students really lack is the ability to write. Uh, and that's one thing that I firmly believe is the, is the epicenter of the entire filmmaking process is the story. And if you can't communicate a story in well-written form, there's obviously going to be a challenge. Mm. Uh, we live in such a bit and bite society that unfortunately younger people don't really know. Like I had term papers where people would use like, you know, short-term vernacular that they would use on Twitter, and I'm like, 
what the heck is this? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, you know, like, like, like rewrite the whole darn thing and, and make sure it's proper English, you know? So it, 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 it's fascinating. But I like, I literally write every day for at least, uh, at least a half hour. I try and get in an hour. And if I get lucky, I'll do like marathon sessions where I can just like, you know, you know, just basically dive in and, and not get out for about 12 hours. Wow. Oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love writing. I literally love writing. When you say writing, also, like, do you have a preference? Are you typing or are you using a pen, you know, for um, a notebook? I, yeah, that, that, that's actually a good question because I do both things. Uh, when I am in brain, like, like kind of like brainstorming mode, mm-hmm. I'll always use a pencil and paper or now I've got an, I'm, I got an iPad that I can scribble on that. And, uh, but then when I start to try and pull things together, then is when I, I'll finally start typing. And I actually never learned how to type, so I'm a, I'm a, a, a quick pecker. <laughs> you know, I never make sure I, I, you know, said that properly. But, you know, so like, you know, but I, I write, you know, pretty fast that way, but I generally get my ideas together in written form. And then I can go back and look at it. And it's always a, it's, writing is a process. It, it's a matter of, I will think about my character, I'll think about the story, and then I'll look at my characters, and I'll create these characters in my head, mm-hmm. and I really won't commit anything to strip form for years, because I want everything to play out in my head, I want it to be able to, you know, know exactly what each of the characters like, what they don't like, what they wear, and all these sorts of things, and then all of a sudden, once you develop your characters so strongly, then your characters start to talk to each other, and then when you go down to the script form, you can literally, like, you're just, you know, letting these people have these conversations, take your plot points, everything else, and it makes the writing process a heck of a lot quicker for me. So, yes, your film, Billboard, it did premiere at the SF Indie Film Festival. That was early February. First of all, I would yep. like to know, how how do you think that went? What was that like? And what does the national theatrical release, what does that mean to you? And what is the difference between those events and what's the same? Sure, absolutely. So we did some uh, test screening and speak previews of the film last fall. And so I listened to my audience and I do change things around. Mm-hmm. And so what we ended up premiering in San Francisco was the finished product. And it's interesting is because I'm not a big submit to film festivals guy. Uh, they invited us to, to screen it because they saw about what we were doing on social media and things. They invited us to screen it. So that was quite an honor. And, you know, we had, we had great audiences. And, 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 like, I was really surprised because we didn't really, it's interesting. So I feel like everything's like an R&D experiment right now for my, basically my next project. Mm-hmm. And so, like, we didn't want to do too much promotion because we wanted to see what some festivals do and whether or not they can pack a house. And they did pack a house, thankfully. Uh, and so it was really awesome to see people's reaction and also people's reaction that are not familiar with the actual storyline as well and seeing, like, how they, you know, did they get it, did they understand it, and I love the Q&As afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then what's happening then is we're starting to release the film nationally on April 5th. We're starting in um, southeastern PA. We're going to be on, I think, eight screens um, in, in that area, and then we're going out to L.A., and then we're going to be moving around the country in a market-to-market saturation uh, sort of release structure so that we can embed ourselves within communities to share what we're doing with communities and also a matter of um, you kind of like having boots on the ground mean a lot more to me than just like going things nationally because I really want to get to know people. I feel like we, you know, we need H2H again, you know, human to human contact. Mm. Uh, and that's what I, I really feel very strongly about that because it's a matter of this pro- this film is about a radio station that's struggling to succeed. Uh, and so they pull out the oldest trick in radio, which is the wacky contest. So they decide to host a billboard sitting contest for four people who live in a billboard to win a mobile home and nine sixty thousand dollars. And so it, it, it's a story really about legacy. It's a matter of uh, an entrepreneur struggle to succeed. It's a matter of how press plays and media plays in the success or failure of somebody's business. It's all these sorts of things, and it's a very uh, intense, touching story. Uh, but if you're if if it's not handled properly, um, it could be mis mis uh, represented. And what we also then did is we, we built, um, we also have a web series that tells mm-hmm. a different side of the story, uh, which is about um, the four people living on the billboard. So it's a story told in parallel from two different points of view. 
and it's all based around a radio station that we've created, WTYT960.com. How would you say that Billboard transcends the normal movie movie going experience? Uh, sure. So it's it's you know one of the things we're going to be doing too is we're going to be doing pop up events at various theaters where we'll run around as the DJs and hand out free swag and stuff to kind of <laughs> to have fun with the audience. Um, but in terms of storytelling, um, we want and so because we're playing with the idea of knowledge and press and success. Uh, to be very informed, you literally have to see both sides of the story. And so, like, you should do the same thing in politics. You should do the same thing whenever you're learning something. And also, like, I debated when I was in college, so this is something that was ingrained in me. You need to know both sides of the story so you know what your argument is. And so to be well-informed, you should know both sides. And so the web series focuses solely on what's happening to these billboard sitters, you know, through the weather, through the trials and tribulations of the radio station, through the community. And then the movie is about the radio station and their trials and tribulations of what's happening on the billboard and everything else. So it's kind of like cause and effect. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because people can be just entertained by seeing either pieces of the content or they could uh, understand my entire story world where they'll get, you know, basically a 360 story view of what I've created. Yeah, because you mentioned the the radio station that you created, the virtual radio station. You know, I have to say, Zeke, I just love, like, how much you can tell was put into Billboard. Like, you guys, (laughs) yeah, like, a a great (laughs) example of, yes, there's a lot to it. And I love it because it just really, you know, it's about thinking big and, and dreaming big and stuff and not being afraid to do so. Thank you. Well, yeah, it's interesting because I ideated this whole thing uh, 10 years ago in a fury with a black Sharpie and a roll of craft paper. And I literally mapped out how the website was going to be, how the stories integrated to each other, what platforms are going to be pushing the stories out to, uh, how things interact and react to, to things. Uh, and it literally, we literally created off of that what that what's on that craft paper. And it's funny, once the film is in theaters, I'm going to take a photograph of that piece of craft paper and share it on social media because people will understand, like, how I created this whole thing just by that one image. Uh, The only thing that was different about it was I believe, I firmly believe in testing things. And so we tested the web series, and I started to watch it. Uh, We just basically staged it just to see what it feels like because it's very very flat in terms of... of, um, what it is in terms of it lives on a billboard, you know, which is almost like a stage. And once I started to see this thing, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I could easily stage this thing. And not knowing the darn thing about mounting a play, um, and I have uh, utmost respect for for that entire industry and everything else as well. So we ended up mounting the the uh, web series as a play called The Billboard Sitters, where we created a mobile app where the audience could interact with the characters via social media and that it would end up changing the outcome of the play. Wow. And so it was very interesting that, that that's the only thing that we created that did not have to do anything with that original um, ideation madness uh, 10 years ago. Uh, but we're constantly playing with form. We're kind of we're playing with the idea of story and, and like, how things evolve. We're, we, we play with, you know, I definitely want the audience involved with the storytelling as well. That's why we give them different opportunities to co-create with me. Like, you know, all these bands on the site, there, there's over a thousand bands on the on the radio station, WTYT 960, and uh, they basically found us, which is really cool. And so what we do then is we promote them on social media, and then the playlist for the, for the radio station is based off of how frequently the bands promote themselves on social media. Because if we're helping them, they have to help themselves. I firmly believe in that. And then how we capped the film was we also created a way for uh, people to create a profile, and they they create a video stating why they'd feel they'd be a great billboard sitting contestant. And then the people with the most votes end up getting cut into the film and so forth as well. So we're kind of playing with things. And, and I feel that, you know, I, I firmly respect the cinema. Without a doubt, one reason why we're going to theaters with the film but it's just a matter of like playing with the form and playing with the idea of uh, community involvement and how you tell a story with this day and age where, you know, we're inundated with screens. And so why not tell a different part of the story that fits that screen? We have to also talk about the cast, Zeke. You know, it's a, oh, sure. <laughs> quite an, it's it, like, wow, what a lineup, what a lineup, like what 
you know, went into this, how did, you know, you go about get Heather Matarazzo, John Robinson, the star of it, Eric Roberts, like so many. And how do you feel about the cast? Oh, it's awesome. And I wanted to create a cast that people recognize that also can people will would relate to it being an independent radio station. So I wanted to uh, find actors that were very indie rooted. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we have you know Heather Metarazzo, Leo Fitzpatrick, who was in Kids, and then John Robinson, who was in Lords of Dogtown and Elephant. And then and then the interesting thing is is then. Um, Casey, the lead, the lead character's nemesis is played by Eric Roberts, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was, it was, it was just, it was just awesome. And, and working with them was fascinating because <laughs> all of them take the process so much, so different. Uh, they're all like hard workers, really hard workers. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when you're working on a shoestring budget, you know, in the middle of August in a cinder block, uh, building, where everybody's sweating because you can't have the air conditioning on for sound purposes, you know, that's when you know um, who's a real actor and who's not. <laughs> wow. You know, those people really do, really do dig in. And so, you know, the cast is, is awesome. They're great to work with. But we had a really huge cast. There's over, uh, I think there's 68 speaking parts in this beast. Um, and so we cast the, the rest of the um, the characters out of Philadelphia, New York, and then also in my hometown of Allentown. Your hometown of where? Allentown, PA. Oh, okay, okay. Allentown, PA. Yes. Shout yep. out, shout out to your hometown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Stuff. Uh -huh. Um. Okay. So, Zeke, what do you think the music industry can learn from Billboard? The music industry. Yeah. Interesting that you say that. Mm -hmm. Is that I feel that the music industry can learn from Billboard a couple of things. One is, is that radio is not dead. Uh, that I firmly believe that radio has to go back to being a localized thing uh, because I feel like radio has the opportunity to build community around it again. Uh, everything is going throwback, you know, with vinyl and, like, I've, I've seen cassette tapes back out there for sale. But I feel like radio actually might have a resurgence. And it's also interesting, too, is that, a lot of the stations are going through a transformation where there's a lot more alternative rock radio stations now. I think, quite honestly, going after my demographic, I'm in my uh, uh, middle 40s, and so it's a matter of we grew up with alternative rock of the 90s and things and punk rock in the 80s. And um, so that's one thing. So the whole radio side of it. But then the other side of it is a matter of the bands. We work with all bands that were unsigned, and it's unbelievable the amount of talent that's out there. And the challenge is, is, is the market is so fragmented of where bands have to put up all their stuff for, to even get, to even get heard or even get, you know, like somebody to discover them. And so the challenge is, is like, there's so many different things out there that it becomes so much noise that you can't easily find a band that you might like. And so that's another reason why we created WTY 960. It was a matter of like, it's alternative rock. You know, that's what the format is that we created it on. But like, you can literally discover bands on that site pretty easily. And so you can listen to them off the playlist, yada, yada, yada. But it's just a matter of giving people a chance for one. And also, two, is helping somebody without worrying about getting something back in return. Everybody's mm -hmm. so me, me, me oriented that we really want to help other people. And and because we're creative beings, we want to help other creative beings. And, like, it, it's also when you start to see somebody that you've helped, you know, start to gain momentum and start to have shows all over the country and, and actually get record deals and everything else. It's awesome. You know, and, and it's just a matter of, like, we just do it because, like, it, it's a part of this project. And so we really feel that we, we, we're not only, like, telling the story, but we're also living the story in a way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what's very interesting about the entire project. But I think that, you know, music um, plays a big part in my life and in every one of my projects. But it's just a matter of, like, giving the underdog a chance. What did you learn about yourself when creating this project? That I can do anything. Mm. <laughs> I didn't know anything about coding. I didn't know anything about all kinds of stuff. It was a matter of, of if I set my mind to it and, and I surround myself with the right people, um, I can, I can really, you know, put any, any vision that I can, I can, you know, put, scratch out on paper, uh, to life, uh, which is pretty fascinating. And, and it, it, it's, it's liberating and scary at the same time. Uh, mm -hmm. but just one of those things that, um, 
that's the most the biggest thing I learned about myself was a matter of you know I can I can do it. Um, you know I wish we we we've hit obstacles along the way and I wish those obstacles didn't happen. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's a growing experience. Do you feel like you're a better filmmaker than you were like even let's say just a year ago? Oh yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting is it, because. You know, a lot of things I learned was from Billboard, I'm definitely taking into my next feature. And in terms of timing, in terms of how to set things up and spending time and resources on X and not on Y and understanding where it is and simplifying things and not overcomplicating them and, and you know, using your initial instinct is generally your best instinct, I found. And so, um, you know, I just learned so much. It's, and now I'm learning about distribution because, unfortunately, uh, the gentleman, uh, by the name of Mark Berman, who was the president of Lionsgate and Think Films, um, he, pa- he was going to distribute Billboard, and he passed away in January unexpectedly. And we had this entire, wow. this entire project up and running and, and to be released. And so we're literally DIYing it. We're doing it ourselves. We're, we're booking theaters. We're, we're trying to get into major cities and everything else. And so it's a matter of, you just have to keep going. Yeah, and and you, and you, you know, yeah, you lick your wounds, but at the same time, they will scab up, and you just you just got to get yourself back out there. But it's it's just one of those things that you just have to stay positive, uh, and that you know there's going to be naysayers, there's going to be people that try to pull you down and take you out and things. But if you believe in what you're doing, other people believe in it too, and and that's what you have to do. Who would you say were like some of your your biggest supporters throughout the the making of Billboard? Oh gosh, definitely. So you're gonna try and make me cry now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, my, my, yeah, definitely, definitely my wife and and my three girls uh, oh. and my mom. Uh, I'm, I'm surrounded by like you know a bevy of, of of awesome ladies, and you know I've got you know a lot of gentlemen that helped me out as well. Ryan Walsh, who has just been a beast. Uh, he came to me as right out of college, you know, with darn thing about film, and I gave him one hell of an of, of an education. Uh, and then Reed Baum, uh, and Matt Bloom and I have done so much stuff together over the years, and also Pat Wilson is my composer. But it, it's like, I could not have done this without my wife. But yeah, just straight up. It, it, it's, um, to try and take on something this big and also having such limited resources, you have to endure a lot, and you have to go through a lot. You're going to deal with a lot of BS and people not believing what you're doing and not understanding what you're doing, but having somebody firmly at your side that will take one for you is imperative, and, and I couldn't have done this without, without it, right? That is wonderful. That is truly wonderful, <laughs> Zeke. <laughs> yeah, I, I, my, wife is, my wife is awesome. I, I love her to death, and, and, and um, I really hope that other people can be as fortunate as, as I am in finding that person. I, I didn't get married until I was, I was <laughs> in my late 30s, um, and so it's a matter of, and I, and I just never found somebody, and, and I found my, 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 my kick-butt wife. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah so there's so much wisdom like even without me like directly asking you advice that you might have for filmmakers i feel like there's a lot of wisdom that you're sharing with us about like what goes into this and some of the things that filmmakers can experience and you even you just like opening up about some of the things that you're going to apply or maybe disregard depending on what's best for for your next project, what do you want people to take away from Billboard? That try something hard is hard, but don't give up. Uh, there will be a time that, that you will have to, you know, like pivot or, or, or do something different. Uh, but it really is a matter of doing something because you believe in it and struggling until you succeed. Uh, that's the biggest thing is like a lot of people who like want to take the easy way out and unfortunately taking the easy way out is, 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 you know, cowardice, I feel. And it's a matter of like doing the hard thing, um, and having principles and doing whatever it takes to make that vision happen. And that's what the film's really about is a matter of, of, you know, struggling to succeed, you know. And then, then there's another question too that, that we're raising, uh, within the context of the film is, is a matter of um, can people still achieve the American dream, or do people even care? And that's mm-hmm. something that I that I toil with in terms of economics and things, and and how we are as a society today. Because this film is very much rooted in our society today. Uh, we've had a lot of people on the radio see it, 
Um, and, you know, they, they tell me how authentic it is, and they ask me if I've been in radio. I'm like, no, I've never been in radio. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> and they're like, wow, it's really authentic and things. And, and, and that's the biggest compliment you could ever get as a comp, as, as a filmmaker, that, like, it's extremely authentic. And that's what you, that's what I, I aspire to do. It's like, my favorite director of all time is Elijah Kazan, because I always thought that he's very, very authentic. Um, it's almost to a fault. Um, but, um, yeah, I've, I've learned a lot, and I'm more than willing to share a lot. Like, I, I've been lecturing at a bunch of different colleges up and, up and down the East Coast, uh, basically, because I, I create so differently than my peers. Uh, and it's also true, it's like, you know, people can't be afraid to do something different. Yeah, you might have to do some educating of, to people so that they understand what you're trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I had that problem. I've had that problem for nine years. Now that people see everything done, they're like, oh, my gosh, now I get it. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, it's like, you know, this past nine years I've been in studio. You know, you, you know then you have your, you know, then you pull everything into the gallery and then you show off your piece. That's basically what I've been doing. You know, it's been fun to see how people react to it and how they engage it and how, what they like and don't like about it. Um you know, uh, and that's what just has been, it's just been fascinating. So this has been a big, a big test, uh, for what I want to do next, but at the same time, it's been such an amazing experience because it, it's, you know, things are boundless if you have a great, if you have a, you know, an imagination. And it's a matter of, you know, not giving in and not giving up until and, and so you see that vision through. It's a hell of a lot easier to give up. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's one other thing, Jules, is in the middle of all the stuff, I decided I was going to train to run a marathon. And so I literally, you know, like, I ran a marathon in the course of this whole crew building this thing and, and making this thing because I didn't only want to tax myself uh, mentally and creatively, I also want to tax myself physically. And so maybe I'm, I'm, I'm a strange bird, but it was a matter of, like, but it's interesting is because the, the time that I had spent running, enabled me to process things and to make things cleaner and refine them and, you know, so that the world became what it was. Wow, so you literally ran a marathon. Oh, yeah, I literally, I ran, my first marathon was the, uh, was the, um, uh, Marine Corps Marathon in D.C. I, I, I never, I never ran a race before in my life and I just, I, you know, I trained for three months and, and I, I went, I ran this, this marathon and it, it was hellacious. I didn't know how you were supposed to, like, walk in to get water. I was running right in. I didn't, I didn't know what the hell you were doing. But, but it's like, it's like it, it, you just do it. You just, you just have to do it. it. It's like, you know, people just can't be afraid, and they just have to be, um, you know, have the will and determination. If they have the vision, just do it. And, and you have the, you know, the desire, you know, and you know, don't let anything stop you. When you mentioned your studio, are you, that's I Dream Machine? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yes. Yeah. So we we've been I've been producing films for you know twenty years. I produce other people's work, but then I'll I'll uh, write, direct, produce my own stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we also do a bunch of stuff with live events for artists and and kids and things. And just because I I, I love the creative process and I love observing the creative process, and that's one reason why we do these different things with artists as well. What would you say are some of your favorite and proudest moments of your career, Zeke? Wow. Okay, so the first one would be my very first film, Affairs, which honestly was a bit mediocre. Um, but I oversold the theater, so we always will hold box office like it's in that theater. Um, that's one. And, and so it, it, it also, uh, it did very well, um, although it was a mediocre film, because I think I'm, I'm a pretty good promoter. Uh, and that put me on a Sundance map and everything else. Then the second one would have to be that I got my, my dad always wanted to be in a, in a, in a film, um, and he was dying of cancer. Mm-hmm. And I, and I raced a, a film in the production so that he, I could get him in one, uh, as, as basically like the dying wish. And it was a proud moment. Um, the film suffered because of that though, quite honestly. Going back to that whole time thing I talked about earlier on. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm proud of In wow. Search of, uh, very much so because it was such a controversial film and I stuck to my guns on it and it's had profound effects where I still get letters from people to this day uh, about how the, the film affects them. Uh, and then I've been proud of, of, of Billboard just because of, uh, I did it. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's a matter of like, like I, I sit back and like, holy cow, like I actually created this monster. It's like Frankenstein and it's walking. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's like it's like it's like one of those moments, and, and so I'm very proud of that. But I'm also proud of, of the legacy that I'm that I'm leaving behind in terms of all the people that work with me. They, a lot of them go out to LA, and then they have awesome careers and things, and, and I'm super psyched about that. Um, you know, so like I'm, I'm glad that I can actually help people in their own careers that, that it's not about me. Um, and that's probably my proudest thing. It's a matter of like seeing Ryan of how much he has grown in the past two and a half years. That you know he he could he he would he could get any job he wanted. I think I feel, uh, but he sticks with me just because he likes that I challenge him all the time. Um, yeah, and, and I you know and, I, and I'm proud that I'm raising these three girls, and and they're seeing somebody that's worked for ten years on one project, and I've never given up. You know, I'm, I'm proud of that, you know, because I could have easily been, oh, my gosh, it's insane, it's too hard, and just, you know, laid down, but I just didn't. So I'm proud of that, too. Also, like, you mentioned the writing down, and speaking of, earlier you talked about you love to write, you write every day. And speaking yeah. of goals, as you just mentioned, Zeke, do you believe in writing the things that you want to accomplish? Like, how do, how do you keep the, your aspirations and stuff in mind? Like, do you have to write it down, or it's just in your heart? You know, vision board. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no I, I, my wife does vision boards uh, every um, New Year's Day. Well, oh, yeah. a bunch of, of, of ladies. Um, I actually, I am a dreamer, um, but I am so active in what I'm creating now that, and, and, this, and when I say the now, I don't mean just billboard, like I'm already working on my next project. Uh, and so that I keep, I, I, I kind of keep the process going. I do create lists. I create lists all the time. And the problem is, is I never look at that list again. I go back and rewrite the list. <laughs> mm, okay. So I have all these things. And, and um, because I have a very active mind and I tend to not thankfully forget things, um, but I, I'm not a big, like, this is my goal, this is what I want, because, like, what I'm doing is not a matter of, like, I find success in the ability to be able to do my next project. Like, I don't look at it in terms of, you know, monetary sense or anything along those lines. Like, it's not like I want to be a millionaire or a billionaire or anything along those lines, because that just is, like, what the hell is it going to get you? You know, it's like, it's like yeah, things are easier, but at the same time, it's a matter of, like, I'd rather be able to just create my next project. But in terms of, of goals, um... I don't know. I, I don't really, it sounds horrible, but I don't really write goals down. Um, no, that's not horrible. Yeah, no, I, it's just because I know what I'm working on next, and that keeps me motivated to keep going. Yeah. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, it does, because you, you don't really need to write it down, because you already just, you already know. That's what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, I do, I, I do write what I'm, like, in the morning, I do, uh, as part of that exercise, is write, write things that I'm thankful for. Mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. it's a matter of like having like gratitude in you know in my heart to start the day, right? Um, and that's something that my wife actually helped me help me you know do um, mm -hmm. early on. It's a matter of like be disciplined in doing it and things. And and then there's also things I want to accomplish in a day, uh, just because like things get a little bit crazy when I've got teams of people work with me. But in terms of long term goals, I don't know. I I didn't even live. I didn't think I'd live as long as I've lived already. <laughs> So, like, I did, so that's one thing, it's just like, you know, so I don't really, you know, I have any really huge long-term goals. But, you know, you get to live out your passion, and you've clearly been resilient, and, you know, you've shown perseverance. And stuff. Oh, absolutely, and, and, and like, i got to tell you, I've never been lucky one day in my life. I, I worked my mm -hmm. butt off, a lot of things always have, have happened you know, to me throughout life, and I never look at them as, as something like a what was me thing. I'm like, I'm so grateful that I was able to have that happen to me because I could persevere through it, and, like, I believe the world has a lot of averages, and so I'm grateful that my daughters haven't had to have the crap happen to them that's happened to me growing up. You know, so I'm, I'm grateful for those sorts of things. So I, I, I live life, like, in a way that, um, obviously, I'm very passionate about about what I'm doing, and but it's just a matter of you know, being grateful for what I have. Um, and very grateful for all the people that shape me. It's like my, my my mother and my grandfather are definitely my two biggest influences in life. And um, but my mother is, is is a lesson of perseverance. You know, she you know was a female minister. She was one of the first in the state of Pennsylvania. 
mm-hmm. and and she's seventy five years old and still working full time. So that just goes to wow because <laughs> she wants to, you know. And, and she's like, "What the heck else can I do with myself?" I'm like, "You're right, Bob. Just keep working," you know. So, <laughs> but but yeah. On that note, Zeke Zelker, everyone, Zeke. I could like keep talking to you like on and on and on. <laughs> Ser- seriously, absolutely love to interview you again for your next um, project. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I'd appreciate that, and, and and this has been fun, you know. And if you have any questions, or any questions, you can find me on on social at Zeke Zelker. Um, and yeah, I'd be more than happy to, you know, more than happy to help people. Like I, I was on, um, you know, there was a blog post about something last week, and a, a guy emailed me, and I emailed him back. I'm like, just call me, and I'll talk to you through the, through the challenge that you're having. You know, so I'm like that. It's like it's like like why not help people instead of like keep, keep everything you know close to chest. Hmm. Yeah, you you definitely seem just seem like a wonderful person. You know, I know even the listeners they're gonna like get this. They yeah, they are like this. They're gonna like sense the wonderful vibe from you, Zeke. And and thank you for you know for of course thank you thank you for taking the time. Um, you know it's been great. And again, like I'm glad you mentioned your website and your socials again, like so that people can be able to keep up with you. You said. ZekeZelker dot com. Yeah, that's yeah, that's my personal. Uh, I don't do too much on that, but the project is Billboard Movie dot yes. com, and then my company is I Dream Machine. And people can reach out to me through social um, at Zeke Zelker. Go go to uh, Billboard Movie dot com, and then if you want to check out the radio station, that's uh, WQRT nine sixty dot com. Yes, there we go. Um, any final messages for this conversation that you'd like to to share? I would just say, you know, when things get tough, just the biggest thing is is to dig deep within yourself and to find out and just to rediscover where you got your passion from and just to keep that passion burning. Because oftentimes it is a challenge and it is a struggle. And the thing is, is that it's only temporary and pain is only temporary. Mm-hmm. So you just have to realize that that is just one more thing to get you to your end goal. Yes. Thank you so much to all the listeners. Thank you so much. And until next time, so booking cool.